welcome to April or almost April which is the time for Lit with Indian Lit and it is just ah, I'm so excited uh Lit with Indian Lit we're in the fourth year now and what it is you wonder is uh it's basically just a month where we read translated Indian literature right uh <laughs> And because it was the fourth year, I thought I would gamify things and make things more interesting. Um, so I did some fun shit this year, which I spoke about in my last video. So you should go check that out. So I will link that up above and down below in the description box so you can check that out and like join us if you please. But in this video, I thought I would give you some recommendations. Some recommendations I've already given you one year ago. Um, when I gave you 10 recommendations, I will also link that and uh, up and down for you to check out um, but for now I thought I would give you 25 recommendations so basically the idea came from a bunch of videos that I saw online which were recommendations A to Z uh, these were primarily videos that I saw which were queer book recommendations uh, which I just thought that like the whole concept was really interesting so um, I have taken that idea from like George Lester and Perpetual Pages and Kathy Tryhard uh, so yeah they, they are wonderful creators you should check them out I will link them down below and their videos down below if you want to know about more queer literature but this is about translated literature so as I said 25 uh, recommendations now you're wondering 25 recommendations with you why there should be 26 if it's A to Z there are 26 letters in the alphabet and uh, you are right but turns out there are like hardly any books or that I can't find any books with the letter X okay which were translated into English it's just i i can't find it so if you know a book that is uh starts with the letter x or like has even the letter x in it uh let me know in the comments down below because i am like interested to know all right like i really tried to find it but i can't so anyway so it's letter like recommendations from a to z without the x all right so that's basically what it is anyway i'm blabbering now let us continue uh what i have done is that i have chosen these books based on a um i really like them or b i have read them or c <laughs> i have heard people um who i trust talk about them and say that they have liked them or d they just went with that letter but i still heard good things about it okay i'm i'm recommending these books to you so yeah um it was really difficult to put uh all of these things in in uh yeah i it was a difficult choice for me okay there were certain alphabets that came along and i just wanted to put like seven books in them but i couldn't so what you can do is you can comment down below with some of your recommendations as well um and let's just like populate this video and the comments with a bunch of like translated book literature shall we uh because i know i have missed out on a lot but i will do more videos where i will talk about all of these books all right so here we go let's get started a is for Age of Frenzy. Age of Frenzy is set in the 1600s in a village in Goa called Aldoshi where we follow all the villagers um, going through their lives. Uh, but this is an interesting time in their lives because Goa is just being invaded by the Portuguese um, and we have them kind of taking over. But along with the Portuguese kind of taking over, we also have a lot of the missionaries who have come and are trying to convert them. Uh, so it's basically them kind of dealing with uh this whole thing uh and it is a very interesting tale uh set in a very interesting time so a is for age of friends b is for baluta by daya pavar translated from marathi this is his memoir living as a dalit man in india uh and i thought that this was a very eye-opening read it is one of my um 
biggest recommendations i thought that this was very eye opening for me um and i just really liked that the way that it was written c is for cobalt blue uh by sachin kundalkar which is one of my favorite books uh this is about uh siblings a brother and a sister who fall in love with the same man who is a guest in their house uh he rents a room in their house um and it's about their heartbreak and what they go through and and it's just a very wonderful short ish sort of read um which really has a gamut of emotions d is the berry by pankaj kapoor this is a very very short novella about this old lady called amma b who is trying to deal with life um now that she's alone um in the world and it's just a very very sweet novella and it will melt your little heart E is for Estuary by Perumal Murugan. This is a book um which is set in the urban world which is quite contrary to what Perumal Murugan usually writes which is set in rural Tamil Nadu. Uh but it is about a father and a son especially the father um just worrying about life um and where it's going to take us it is supposed to be a parody or a satire on the world that we live in um with uh talking about e-commerce and just a bunch of things that we deal with currently um and is said to be a very interesting read F is for folk tales from India compiled by A K Ramanujan this is a bunch of folk tales translated from 22 languages um and A K Ramanujan has sort of compiled them these are basically folklore that either have been translated or have just been retold um and from all over the country uh these are small things uh that like your grandmother used to tell you or or things like that but just from various parts of india um and this could be ranging from like maybe a few paragraphs to a couple of pages and it's a really really interesting read g is for gachar gochar by vivek shanbhag this there is no way i could have not included this in this list because this is such a staple within the indian translated uh, works uh, and this there is it's a little hard to explain but also it is really short it is about essentially this family and um things that happen in it <laughs> uh but essentially they um were people who were sort of not very well off and then they come into money and uh just how they deal with that and a bunch of other things happening in the family but it is very short and very very interesting and the ending will have you questioning a lot of things H is for the hour before dawn by Babendra Nath Sakya translated from Assamese and this is told um from a woman's perspective in a village pre independence in india um her husband is going to get remarried uh she is wondering why this is happening she sees this as a betrayal because she has already given him um so many heirs and and sons um but it is about her dealing with that and also her dealing with her relationship with her first born son um and that i have heard absolutely wonderful things about the author and this book uh so i actually hope to read it this month but uh yeah it it seems to be excellent I is for I want to destroy myself by Malika Amar Sheikh this is her memoir um where she talks about her marriage to a very very famous uh author and also the founder of the Dalit Panthers Namdev Dasal um it was a very abusive marriage um and she talks about how she dealt with it and what that marriage was like but also um apparently paints a wonderful picture of a time back then and of bombay and of mumbai and the struggle and everything um so yeah j is for jasmine days by benjamin this was the first winner of the jcb prize for literature um and this is a book about um 
Samira, who is in an unknown Middle Eastern country, but she is an RJ or a radio jockey um, and is living a pretty good life. Um, but there is suddenly these sparks of revolution that are seen in the country, uh, which is basically the Arab Spring, which takes place. It's basically how her life seems to change um, and how she navigates this situation as she sees herself and her family and people around her kind of navigating the situation and maybe even getting part of the politics. K is for Karaku by Bama. Uh, this is the first ever memoir by a Dalit woman um, and this is about her life as being a Dalit Christian and still the amount of um, stuff that she had to face being that um, and I've heard that it is really really good and I hope to read it but I've heard really really good things about it. L is for Legends of Kasak by Ovi Vijayan and this is our own uh, 100 years of solitude but less fucked up. <laughs> but essentially this is about a school teacher who gets transferred to this small village um, and it is his like POV of what is happening in the village and let's just say that there are some weird things sort of happening there um, and there are some interesting things and it's just a very interesting look at everything um, that happens and it's a book that will um, definitely stay with you. There are some characters that I have that still stay with me. M is My Story by Kamala Das or Suraya. This is one of my favorite books. Uh, it is her memoir and it is absolutely beautifully written. She is just so brazen and, and truthful and honest and brutal um, in all the things that she's trying to say. And this was written a while back, I think in the 60s or the 70s. Um, and she's just so brazen about her sexuality and just everything that she felt. Um, and it was quite the shock when it was written. Um, but it's, uh, it's, she was a pathbreaker and she was absolutely brilliant. Uh, and it is just a wonderful book to read even now. N is for No Presence Please by Jayant Kaikini. And this is a collection of short stories of people in Mumbai. Um, it is literally just that. Um, it is very interesting. I liked some parts of it and some parts of it were okay. But overall, I thought that it was really, really well done. Um, and it really gave you a flavor of the city and the people in it. O is for Outcast by Matambu Kanhukutan um, and I'm just going to read out what it says. It says that it is based on the 1905 trial of a Nambudri woman for adultery and the revenge she exacted on her 64 lovers who belong to the most powerful families of the land. Um, this just came out last year, if I'm not mistaken, was translated last year um, and I've heard really, really good things about it and uh, yeah. P is for Payo by Permal Murgan. Uh, I have read a lot of Permal Murgan, but this one might be my favorite. Um, it is about a couple who get married and they go to the husband's village to kind of settle down. Um, though it is a secret that it is an intercaste marriage, only the couple know about it because if the husband's family or the village get to know that they that might be revenge or something that might take place um so they try to keep it a secret but the husband is quite naive um and it's it it's sort of insidious how people start suspecting things and and things may or may not go wrong but it's it, it's wonderful um the way that it is written it is quite short as well uh but i just thought that it described the um like everything really really well um including the people and their feelings and also the atmosphere of the village q is for quiver by javed akhtar javed akhtar is a very famous songwriter but he is also a very famous poet um his father and grandfather were also poets um, in Urdu and he writes this book which is his Urdu poetry which is written so you can read the Urdu poetry um, in English but it is also translated to English so you can read both um, and I've heard that it is really really good and um, Javed Akhtar is just amazing so Q is for Quiver.
R is for Ratno Doli by Dhumketu. Dhumketu is said to be a pioneer of Gujarati short fiction. So this is a collection of his best short fiction. Uh, he in specifically wrote a lot about the rural Gujarati uh, life, um, which he felt was a community that was underrepresented in literature in general. Um, so I've heard really, really good things about it. And uh, yeah. S is for Six Acres and a Third by Fakir Mohan Senapati. This is again one of my favorites. Uh, it is satire um, <laughs> written in like the early 1900s but still made me laugh so much and I read it literally last year but it was it was hilarious but let me tell you what it's about it's basically about this village um in 1905 or something in um Odessa where uh we are still living under feudal law or the zamindari system and we get to know about the zamindars and the villagers and just a bunch of things that happen in various households um and it is narrated by these very sarcastic wonderful narrators which just kind of um take you through the story um and i just found it to be really really amazing and it hit my sense of humor um but yeah i uh, i i was really surprised how i vibed with this book written like a hundred years ago and T is for Tamas by Kisham Sani. Of course, it had to be. Uh, Tamas is one of my favorite books. I do not stop talking about it. Um, and I refuse to. I am, I'm sorry, but not sorry. Uh, this is a book set in Punjab during pre-partition. In fact, right before the partition of India and Pakistan. Uh, where there is a incident that happens that sets off a bunch of communal tensions and because of that there are these riots that take place and it basically follows um, the village and the people in it uh, before and after it follows um, people from all over all different sorts of communities including the British um, and it is just a really really well done book. Bhisham Sani took some of these incidents from his own experiences and, and things that he himself saw um, during that time so it is just a really brilliantly written book uh, that it just has stayed with me through all these years and you is Uttarakhanda by S.L. Bhairapa. I have heard really really good things about this author and this book. Uh, this is uh, the Sita's perspective of the Ramayana and yes I am aware that there are a lot of books like this. However I've heard really really good things about the author as well as this book because what he does is that he humanizes um, the characters of the epic which have now been like made to be gods um and yeah i've heard really really good things about the way he writes and about this book in general v is for virgin fish at babugad by loknath bhattacharya this was actually recommended to me by arunava sinha who is a really great bengali translator and this is a book in bengali translated english uh but this i will read out what it is about because i think that it does a better job at explaining it um, but it says that it is set in a detention camp where men and women are divested of their clothes and individual identities but are provided with an array of luxuries including unlimited carnal pressure. This novel is as much as a political allegory as a parable of the triumph of consumerist culture. So uh, this is again a really short read and uh, is said to be really really good. So. W is for Written in Tears by Arupa Patangya Kalita and this is a book which is a short story collection about um, the Assamese life um, and the conflicts that uh, they all kind of lived in um, and I've heard amazing things about this book absolutely no one <laughs> who i have known has said anything terrible about this book so uh yeah i've heard really really good things about this book and the author now x of course we don't have a book so let's just get on to y which is yajna seni by pratibari um this is a book 
told from Draupadi's perspective um, and Draupadi of course is a character in the epic of the Mahabharat which is the other uh, huge epic in India apart from the Ramayana which I just mentioned um, and yeah I've heard really really good things about this one as well and I hope to read it to see what people think because I've heard good things about this one as well and Z or Z is for Zindagi Nama by Krishna Sokti. Uh, this literally translates to the saga of life and this is about a small idyllic village in Punjab uh, way before the partition set in the early 1900s um, where this village lives in this idyllic peace uh, that is that these people call the Shahs who kind of rule over the village who are these um, money lenders of sorts um, and everything kind of revolves around their family but we get to know about the men and the women and their sort of lives and and everything that goes on in the village uh, but of course a lot of things are happening on the outskirts um, with the British colonizing and um, the world war and all of that sort of stuff so we sort of see how this idyllic life is sort of crumbling and people are starting to question their lives and how um, things are going at the moment um, and that's basically what the book is about. So there you have it. Those are my recommendations for Indian translated literature A to Z without the X. I'm sorry about that one. Um, I hope that this was helpful to you. If you have more recommendations, which I am sure you will, please do add them in the comment section. Um, absolutely just feed that in. Um, I will put all of these books down in the description as well for you to check out. Um, and I hope that you find at least one of them interesting and that you pick them up um, and join us for Lit with Indian Lit this month or just you know in any month that's fine like as long as you read Indian translated literature that's amazing and I am so happy so uh, thanks so much and um, I will see you in my next video bye